This is Jamie with Formidable Fabrications. If you've been watching my Instagram, you may have seen this gem on my on my uh, feed. Yeah, this. Yep. So, this is one of my regular clients. Um, he brought me this mower, absolute gem of a mower, um, missing a wheel, and uh, you guys may have seen a picture of this. Let's put this one in motion. You see it? It moves. It's not supposed to. So this thing's held on with uh, quarter inch bolts. Uh, that bolt's missing right there. That bolt is loose. Same thing on the other side. So story is, well, actually not the story, but the basis of this mower is, this is a leaf vac setup that hooks onto a uh, Toro zero turn rider. And I didn't have footage of me taking this off. Uh, my mics were charging, so I just took this off in the meantime. But this grinder right here has a little problem, little little air hole there, air conditioning vent. So I've already started taking that apart. So that's the actual piece that the hose hooks into and it mounts onto that and then it shoots the grass out of there and up into this like collection unit where there's supposed to be like a big trash can in here. Um, so long story short, he brought me this whole mess here, this new grinder that actually works uh, minus the air conditioning vents. So I got to make this fit onto that, um, which normally would be easy is four bolts that hold on right here. There's one, two, and there's two on the other side, and they should mount actually perfectly up with the holes that are in there. But uh, the unfortunate part is this metal piece right here is the holder for the gas tank. So this one has a gas tank. Where's the gas tank? Gas tank is down here next to the mower. This one is actually underneath. It's a whole separate unit. So I have to put this whole piece on there. So that has to be like welded on here somehow, which I'm really not sure how we're gonna, I'm gonna do that exactly. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's something special. Um, so this is like a custom made bracket um, that I didn't make for this one, but it's custom made. So he could take one of these old setups that's supposed to go on like a lawn tractor and mount it to a zero turn. Um, I get his rationale for it because this setup has a separate motor and a grinder that grinds up the leaves and grass when it comes out of the deck, um, grinds it up more and then puts it into the chute and brings it down versus the Toro one, which hooks onto the deck and runs off a, a deck pulley. And then it runs like a tiny little grinder here, which shoots it up into like a little bagging system. So the setup for this, is I want to say $3,500 to $4,000. This setup, he probably has, we'll say $1,500 tied into it. Um, but this is one of those deals where you save a dime to spend a dollar. Um, these things are down a lot. There's always like an issue with them. Like that motor is old. It's, a super, it's probably as old as I am. That one, newer, not too much newer. Um, and then these setups, I don't know. I mean, they're probably from the nineties, maybe the eighties. I don't know. They're, they're old. So, you know, and you're trying to put it on one of these mowers. Um, and this is once again, where you get into the fabrication side of stuff. Is it worth messing with this to overcome the cost when you're running a business where you're relying on these? So he has three of these mowers with three setups. None of the setups are fully compatible with each of the mowers. So if this mower is down, that setup doesn't work. And if a setup like this on one of the other mowers doesn't work, then that mower's down. So you could have two setups that work and two mowers that work, but you're actually only able to use one because they don't interchange back and forth. So I know he wants to fix that, but that's easier said than done when none of the mowers are exactly the same. So it's, uh, it's definitely a puzzle to put together. Um, yeah, but this, this right here, just when he pulled this out of the, out of the truck and I saw that, 
I was like, yep, yeah, I know what I'm in for today. That's just like the pre-shadowing, like an omen of what's going on. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the, that's the skinny of it. Um, one of the other mowers I did, we made a mount for this. Uh, I actually made one of the mounts, not this one, but one of the mounts. And I actually made a whole um, chute that mounts up in there that the hose connects to and comes up. Um, super heavy duty steel. The ones that he got with this were like real thin metal that was just formed and they weren't like welded or anything. Um, every time they like hit something on the corner there, it would like bend it in. So I built him a nice heavy one. Um, and it's, it was, it's pretty nice, but you know, it's, I can build all the nice stuff I want, but you're still working with this kind of situation. So, uh, with that said, first order business is to get that. Well, no, actually that'd be the second order business. First order business is getting this frame squared away. Cause this is just, I wish I could show you with, I only got one hand, so I'm holding the camera, but this whole frame is attached to this. And the only thing holding this to the mower is this bracket right here. And there's only two bolts in there. There's one there, one on the other side, and they're both loose. So this thing just rattles and he's like, man, we need to secure this. We should put a bar from here to here and that would really secure it. And I was like, oh yeah, that would probably work great until I got down and I saw this. And I'm like, really seriously? Like you didn't notice that this thing wiggles when you're driving it, but whatever. Not my monkey, not my circus. <clears throat> so, all I can do is just <clears throat> fix it the best I can and uh, pray for the best, I guess. So anyway, I'm going to put you up on the camera stand and uh, you guys can watch as I do this. Uh, my mics are probably going to die again. Um, I did record this whole thing over because the first time I did it and I looked at my mics, I found they were dead. So yeah, that was probably just a bunch of this and you have no idea what's going on. So anyway, let me charge up these mics. You guys can watch from afar. Um, let's get crack and see what we can, we can do on this thing. It's not one of my finest moments on this project, but whatever. <laughs> Okay, so everything is drilled out. Now, if you look, this is actually almost tilted back just a hair, which is perfectly fine. Um, so that's all straightened out. I got bolts in there. I don't have nuts on hand. And did the same thing on that side. Some bolts going all the way through. So now at least it's sitting up straight and not leaning so now it's almost kind of has a slight tilt this way, which is what it's supposed to be. And the can will actually sit upright. Now, the only thing I worry about, since it's leaning so far up and it's not tilted down, is when he drives it into his box truck, if that little point up there is going to rub the very top of the, um, the uh, garage door roof. So once again, it's not really my problem. I'll do the best I can to get this thing squared away. But at least it is more secure. There's no movement in it. That's what it's supposed to be. So. 
problem now. You can see there's like a gap right here. So what that is, is there's like these little dimples in the metal. I don't know what it was originally for, but uh, it's keeping this thing from sitting flush on here, which is my original intent was just to weld this on, this plate on and be done with it. And that would be a quick and easy way to secure this thing on. But uh, now it's looking like uh, I might have to either cut those dimples out or try and figure out some better way to rest this thing on here. Not really sure at the moment. But there's plenty of room for this thing to play on. Truth be told, we could really make this thing in as tight as the mower as we possibly could. So as you can see, there's a little nipple thingy right here, and there's a little piece here, and a little thing here. So I think what I'm going to have to do is cut up here, come across, and then come down. And then this, I might just take a hole saw and just knock that one out and that'll get me flat and this piece right here it hangs off the edge so it doesn't really matter All right, quick update on the situation here. I had to let everything charge up. Um, I ended up taking the piece off of the front of this that that tube hooks into, since that was the right size to fit into that original one. And what I did was I welded that onto the front of this one, so that hose would go right back on and then it could go down to the chute that collects it down there. Um, so I managed to put some tack welds on this to hold it in place. It looks really great where it sets. I mean, it's it's nice and in there and it's forward, but uh, the problem is, is that this tank, the shape of it, you have to be able to slide it in there. So I can't put the tank in and then weld it because it'll melt the tank. And in order to slide the tank in, I have to have clearance all the way out to like about here in order to slide the tank in. And those little brackets are in the way. That's in the way. Uh, that piece right there is in the way. So this piece right here, this whole setup would have to come out about another six to eight inches minimum, which would put this bracket where the motor is way out over here. So there'd be a lot of weight resting on this side. So essentially I'm just waiting for the client to come by and let me know what he wants to do. All right, it's day two, we're back in the shop. Um, I did talk to the client and what we came up with was we need to relocate the fuel tank. So if you remember the, the bracket had the fuel tank right there that slid in. So instead we just, um, mounted the motor to the original frame and then he is going to run a fuel line from here 
down around the engine, down into the fuel lines there with a cutoff valve. So he can cut it off there when he's not using it, but he can run it up here into the mower when he's done. So with that said, uh, I didn't need that other bracket that's down there. So I was able just to mount this directly to the frame, but I still had the problem of mating this opening, which you can see in here, which is a six inch opening to a seven inch square opening. So what I did on that was uh, I started off with four pieces of steel. They're cut at an angle, so I kind of made a, a slight pyramid. And then I took the, cut the original chute off of this, if you recall, it came up and it was like kind of rounded. So I cut that off and I welded it to the bottom of this. And then I put some pieces of metal down to cover um, just so it had like a sleeve to set in and drill two holes put bolts in there so it's completely solid um, and I had to move this from up here down to here a little bit so all in all it's sturdy there's no movement and I was able to uh, get the bolts and tighten these bolts up to the hold of the frame onto the mower so the only thing left I have to do on this is he wants me to put a brace from here to this roll bar. So the roll bar is fairly sturdy. There's a, a slight wiggle to it, but um, he needs some kind of brace from here to here. Lastly, we need to figure out where to put the hole or where to put these two pieces at. So by holding up the square, it gives me a good idea. All right, so now I've got the two little braces up. So once I get the bar, it'll slide in there with a hole. And the other side of the bar will meet here. And when he wants to take it off, he just takes the bolt and this piece will just fall down. So I've got to measure this out. If I go 18 inches, that should be plenty of room.
go right there and provide uh, stability to keep this thing from wobbling back and forth. So I just need to drill that hole, run the bolt through it, tighten it up, and then this job is essentially done. So I do want to say one thing is that I go to Harbor Freight and I've been buying these uh, these step drill bits. So Harbor Freight has three different levels. They have ones that are this color. Actually, I'll show you if I still have any. This is my stash. Okay, so they have ones that are this color but look like this. You can see how it's how this is straight. Then they have these, which are a little bit better, a little bit more expensive. They still work. And then they have these. These by far have been the absolute best drill bits. Um, I usually buy a couple of them at a time. I think for a three pack, it's like, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks compared to the $10, I think for the three pack of the cheap ones. But it comes in this, it goes from I don't know what it is, it's like eighth to a eighth to a half. And then you have the one that goes from, I don't even know what that says. I don't know, it's small, but then it goes up to uh, three quarters. And then it also has this one. So if you're doing thicker steels and you want to get up to a half inch, you can use this because you see the flutes are bigger on it. So you can get into the, um, the heavier steels a little easier. But using these on a drill press is phenomenal. They work wonderful. So just a little something. I know Harbor Freight isn't everyone's favorite, but they do have some random stuff that is actually pretty good. And those drill bits, I would say, are probably some of the better ones out there. I have bought ones from like Lowe's and Home Depot, the, um, the step bits, but they just, they're not any better than these. And for the price of these, you can buy like three sets of these for the price of like one good one at Lowe's. And if you break one of these, so be it, you go buy another one. It's not a huge loss compared to if you bust one at Lowe's, you're out like 50, 60 bucks. So with all that, that's the job done. So we got a brace up there to keep this from wobbling. We reinforced that. We swapped out motors. We made an adapter for this. It was originally a seven inch and he needed it to run a six inch hose. So I was able to cut that one off of there and weld it on here. And then same for this, just had to make a mount for that to get a kind of a semi-square seven inch to a round five and a half inch so we could put this hose on to feed it and we still had to have enough hose on here too so this door uh, hopefully i can do this so that has to be enough hose to be flexible so this door can be opened without the pipe coming off so another job complete uh Thanks for watching. I know it wasn't the greatest video. Um, it's uh, just one of these weird jobs that comes up and unfortunately I'm just not able to film every single thing. So 
I do have a trailer out there that has been begging me to get finished over there. It's probably been a couple months now that it's been sitting out there. It's going to need new fenders, wheel bearings, brakes. Um, I got all the parts there. I got new brake shoes, uh, the whole brake setup, new brake drums. I got... Oh, down here. I got new steel for the custom fenders that we're putting on it. We're doing some toolboxes. We're doing some wiring. Um, that will be a multi-part video series. Um, but that'll definitely be a, a pretty neat project to work on. So once again, uh, please like, subscribe. Um, I appreciate any comments. If there's something you like, something you don't like, something you want to see, um, something I should be doing differently. This is all new to me. So anything you guys can put out there for me, um, I really do appreciate it all. And um, definitely check out uh, New Jersey Transit Band. That's my nephew's band. So if you like the music, that's from him. So please give him a shout out. He's on Instagram, New Jersey Transit with a Z band. So uh, once again, I'll see you on the next one.